power electronics. In this session, we will discuss the ramp and pedestal triggering circuit. Let us start with a brief introduction. In the past, various phase control techniques were known and widely used for controlling a supply of electrical energy to a load. One such phase circuit is of half wave technique either HAR R triggering or RC half wave triggering. In these circuits, the thyristor is gated only in the positive half cycle of the input supply and only portions of input source in each successive positive half cycle is supplied to the load. With such a half wave phase control circuitry, a substantial DC component is delivered to the load and is considered as one of the main disadvantages of this method. Another type of phase control circuit are the full wave techniques such as the diac track scheme or the full wave RC triggering scheme discussed in the previous session. In such type of circuits, a triac or SCR or any other type of controllable AC switching device is gated such that the supply energy is transferred to the load during positive and negative half cycles of an input supply. In this type of circuits, the gating of the triac or the SCR is affected by the diac or other bilateral threshold device which conducts when the voltage across the capacitor exceeds a predetermined value regardless of its polarity. This capacitor will be charged during each half cycle through a variable resistance and variations in such resistance determine the charging rate of the capacitor and therefore the particular time during each half cycle at which the diac enables the track. It is believed that one of the disadvantages or undesirable features of these type of phase control circuits is that they suffer from gain or sensitivity limitations. Hence, the ramp and uh, pedestal triggering circuit came into picture. In this diagram, you are looking at the ramp and pedestal triggering for a single phase AC voltage controller using a thyristor. This is what actually is the ramp and pedestal circuitry. Using the UJT, you are trying to trigger the two thyristors T1 and T2. Now, let us understand how this particular circuitry works with the principle of operation. Right, the ramp and pedestal triggering is an improved synchronized UJT triggering circuit. This triggering circuit can be used for AC voltage controllers, single phase semiconverters, as well as full converters. Here, Vz is the specified output voltage of the Zener diode and resistance R2 is used as the potential divider. The threshold voltage of the UJT is given as eta Vz where eta can be called as the sta intrinsic standoff ratio of the thyristor sorry of the UJT and it varies between 0 0.5 to 0 0.8. The pedestal voltage VPD can be controlled by changing the wiper position, this is the wiper, and is always lesser than the threshold voltage of the UJT, which is eta Vz. It's a very important point. We must always make sure that the pedestal voltage is lesser than the threshold voltage of the UJT. During the charging of the capacitor C, since the capacitor voltage Vc is greater than that of the VPD, the diode D is off as it will be reverse biased. The capacitor charges through resistor R and the rate of char capacitor charging depends upon the value of VPD. Whenever the capacitor voltage Vc reaches the threshold voltage of the UJT which is eta Vz, the UJT is turned on and a current flows through the primary of the pulse transformer and a triggering pulse can be obtained from the secondary of the pulse transformer. Therefore, the thyristor T1 and T2 will be triggered. Now, now the capacitor, once the UJT is triggered and the thyristors are triggered, the capacitor now starts to discharge and the capacitor voltage reduces to VPD and it stays there as long as the input supply voltage Vs is greater than the VPD. After Vs becomes less than VPD, the capacitor voltage reduces to zero which occurs at omega t equals pi. 
the variation in the triggering angle alpha is achieved by varying the value of the pedestal voltage which is by varying the wiper across R2. Here to better understand the pedestal triggering circuit we will take two cases. Let us start first by considering the pedestal voltage is low. Now since the pedestal voltage VPD across the capacitor C is low, the charging time of the capacitor will be long. The capacitor charges through R. So the charging time of the capacitor will be long and therefore the firing angle alpha will be high and the average output voltage will also will be low. Now on the other hand when I consider the pedestal voltage is high with a high value of the pedestal voltage VPD across the capacitor C. The charging time of the capacitor will be small because the capacitor is already charged to a high value of VPD. So it takes a small value of time for the capacitor voltage to reach the threshold voltage of the UJT which is eta Vz and therefore alpha will be low and the average output load voltage will be high. Now coming to the mathematical part of the circuitry, let us assume that a time capital T is required to charge the capacitor from the pedestal voltage VPD to the threshold voltage of the UJT which is eta Vz. Now we can therefore write eta Vz equals to the pedestal voltage plus Zener minus the pedestal voltage multiplied by this factor is nothing but eta which is the intrinsic standoff ratio of the UJT which is 1 minus e to the power of minus capital T by RC. Capital T we already have defined as the time required to charge the capacitor from VPD to eta Vz which is the threshold voltage of UJT. Now actually the Zener minus pedestal difference voltage difference is the effective voltage which is used to charge the capacitor from the VPD to eta Vz. So this is actually what you are looking at across the rise time. So this is the factor that causes the capacitor to charge and the time value of this charging is given by the second uh, part of this equation across the RHS. Now having said that therefore now I can write an equation for T which is the time for charging the capacitor from VPD to eta Vz. This is equal to RC multiplied by ln of this is the required value Vz minus VPD effective voltage that is required to charge the capacitor from the VPD to the threshold voltage of the UJT which is eta Vz divided by the Zener voltage multiplied by 1 minus eta. So I already have said eta is the intrinsic standoff ratio of the UJT and it varies between 0.5 to 0.8. And therefore, finally, the firing angle alpha is equal to alpha is equals to omega into T. T I am taking from equation 2 here. You simply replace the value of T and therefore you will get the value of alpha. So you can compute the value of alpha given you have the values of R and C multiply uh, and uh, Zener voltage, pedestal voltage as well as Vita. Sorry, eta there, right. So with that, we finally come to the waveforms of the ramp and pedestal triggering. So just like how I said, we will consider two different cases. One is when VPD is low and one is when VPD is high. The left uh, set of waveforms what you are looking at, this is actually for VPD, the pedestal voltage is low and this is VPD when it is high. In fact, the name ramp and pedestal comes for comes from the source that this is actually the uh, reason why we call it as ramp and pedestal. We will look into uh, this case first that is when the pedestal voltage is uh, low. Sorry, the pedestal voltage is high. Now coming to the waveforms input, you have the DC component that is given here because if you just come back and look at the circuitry, you have a bridge rectifier. Therefore, the AC is rectified to be DC, pulsating to be very precise. <clears throat> now, this is the capacitor voltage and this is very very important. So we here we have sub drawn some lines to indicate some important parameters. Here this line what you are looking at, the discontinuous line, this is eta Vz which is the threshold voltage of the UJT. So the UJT will trigger as soon as the capacitor voltage reaches this value. Right. So then you have probably uh, another parameter alpha so alpha is the exact value of 
T at which the thyristor, sorry, the UJT triggers and therefore the thyristor triggers. Now, uh, at the beginning of the input half cycle, the converted DC varies and every negative half cycle is converted into a positive half cycle. Now, this is what is being fed to the triggering circuitry. So, as the input varies and reaches a value which is equal to eta vz. Now, when will the Vc reach eta vz? We already have said depends upon the value of the pedestal voltage. Since the pedestal voltage for the second set of waveforms here is high, the time taken for the capacitor to reach from the pedestal to the eta vz will be low and therefore alpha will be low. So, input the capacitor voltage slowly rises and the moment it reaches the value of eta vz, the UJT is triggered and therefore the thyristors will be triggered. But let us look into what is ramp and what is pedestal here. So, what you are looking at from 0 till the VC reaches eta vz, this is the ramp. Now, when the UJT is triggered, it starts to discharge slowly but it, dis it does not discharge completely to 0 because when you look at this particular circuitry, the input is still greater. So, it will decrease only to a small point which we have stated here. Right. The capacitor now starts to discharge and the capacitor voltage reduces to VPD. That is what is this one. So, this flat portion of the waveform what you are looking at is what is VPD, pedestal voltage. Right. So, here what happens? Uh, the capacitor starts to slowly discharge and once the capacitor voltage becomes VPD, it will hold on to that value for some time. Now, how long will it hold on to that value? As long as the input voltage is greater than the pedestal voltage. Now, the moment the input voltage becomes lesser than VPD, the capacitor will also start to discharge and it will reach 0 at omega t is equals to pi. Now, therefore, that is what we have stated. So, the VPD well, the capacitor holds on to VPD as long as the supply is greater than the pedestal voltage and once the Vs becomes lesser than or equal to VPD, the capacitor then starts to further discharge and it will reach 0 at omega t equals to pi. So, this is the ramp and this flat portion of the waveform is the pedestal. So, that is why this particular triggering circuit is called as ramp and pedestal. Now, coming to this waveform, this is actually the gating signal, not to be confused with VAK. This is the gating signal for the thyristor. Okay. So, as soon as the capacitor voltage reaches the eta vz, the threshold voltage of the UJT, a triggering pulse will be created towards the gate supply and the thyristor T1 and T2 both will be triggered. You can see in the positive off cycle, one pulse is created and therefore, when you come back to the diagram, in the positive off cycle, probably V1, T1 will trigger and the negative off cycle, again a gate pulse is created, but this time T2 will trigger. Right, now coming back lastly at the load circuit, load voltage here. Now, load is pretty uh, easy to understand. Whenever the thyristor triggers, you will see a load voltage appearing across the thyristor. Now, what is important here is that you must understand thyristors will conduct only for one half of the input supply. So, basically, even though, let me come back to the waveform. Basically, even though you are creating two triggering pulses in one full input cycle, only one thyristor will conduct in one half of the input cycle and therefore, you will see a load voltage appearing when either T1 or T2 is triggered. This is what is the operation. Now, this is as I said for a high value of VPD. Now, coming to the first set of waveforms here which is for a low value of VP. Uh, VPD here. Now, when I say low value of VPD, you must understand the capacitor voltage initially is very low. Therefore, the when the input starts, half cycle starts, the resistor, uh, the current uh, flows through resistor and the capacitor starts to charge. But the time taken by the capacitor to reach the threshold voltage of the UJT will now be long because the capacitor is initially at a low voltage. If the capacitor is initially at a high voltage, it will take a short amount of time or a lesser amount of time to reach UJT, which is our this waveform scenario. So, now since we are saying the VPD value is, uh, let us say, very low, the time taken by the capacitor is pretty high. You look at the ramp value here. Now, if you are looking at the ramp, the value of alpha, which is actually the case when the VC reaches eta VZ, is pretty long. This is alpha and this is the time instant at which the gate pulse is created for thyristors T1 and T2. 
After that, now we have to assume this particular waveform in such a scenario that the value of VPD, the pedestal voltage, when VC reaches eta Vz will be lesser than the supply voltage. Therefore, it will not stand or it will not create a flat portion just like what it did for when the case of VPD was high and it will continue to discharge in a similar fashion and in a non-continuous fashion and it will, uh, sorry, it in a continuous fashion and it will reach zero. Therefore, when the value of VPD is very low, you cannot see the pedestal waveform. So, this flat portion is the pedestal waveform. You, the pedestal part of the waveform will not be seen when VPD is low. Right. So, this is once again very similar to the gate triggering pulse and here the difference between the this set and this set is that alpha here is pretty high, here it is pretty low because the pedestal voltage here was high. Here it was low and whenever a gate pulse is created accordingly the thyristor will start to conduct and a load voltage will appear across the load and this waveform is the load voltage. You can see the value of alpha is high and therefore the average output voltage across the load is pretty low whereas here it is quite high comparatively. Right. So that is about the rampant pedestal triggering circuit. Thank you.